Good morning, folks. Another day of relative calm on our star. Another day of watching plasma filaments taunt us while tiptoeing across the Earth-facing disk. Today we're seeing the last of the eruption threat turning to the right. We had 10 days without a gamma ray burst and then last night got one from the Pavo constellation. We're also noting a neutron spike this morning on Bartol. Cosmic energy is up. The solar flaring remains low yet again, barely even see flares. The bright umbral fields tell us there could be some sunspots coming in on the left. And while they are small, they do all contain beta complexity, and they've got time to grow as we've got a few days until Mercury conjoins the sun, should see a solar uptick. This will be good to monitor today, their growth. Looking at three days of solar wind shows the coronal hole stream we are in now. Speed has jumped over 600 kilometers per second, but with density falling, it was only the initial impact that made geomagnetic instability doing well this morning. So we've got the incoming coronal hole, still just the northern tip visible there. Any quake upticks from this shouldn't be too bad. It's carrying only moderate force with it now, and that's me being generous. Watch how the blue coronal magnetic fields squeeze in to pinch the red coronal hole opening, and that is just as the near-Earth influence was readying to jump to negative. Top story of the day comes from Princeton University. The Hall Effect works with neutral scenarios as well. Yet another example of the world's leading experts discovering that our knowledge of electricity and magnetism has got to change by the day. I'd also like to note that it's Saturday, so we'll have another hour podcast on Fly on the Wall today. We'll have a number of terrific topics. Membership is 3 bucks a month or $20 for a whole year. 200 hours of content is not going to watch itself. Typhoon Maysak, meet the Philippines. The clouds are cresting the islands now, with a small storm behind it developing in the West Pacific as well. We'll wish the Philippines the best of luck as Maysak will crest today. Coming across the Pacific, we see that same storm delivering the moisture to the West Coast. Combined with the convergence zone from last night, we had a number of weather events, high winds, Tornadoes, hail, localized flooding, Zeus getting wasted and messing with the aircraft, you know, the usual. Right now there is an amazing circuit coming down out of the Arctic all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. The eastern side of the convergence is shooting up and across the North Atlantic right past Europe and back all the way up into the Arctic. That's why there are areas in the Arctic Circle that are the same temperature as it is in some portions of the Gulf states, which is absurd. The convergence was highly active last night again, but tonight should be a bit lighter of an evening. The convergence will bring less powerful storms to the southeast, even while creating that asinine temperature delta. Still got significant alerts in the northeast and northwest, including some major snow events still lingering. In Europe, the prime focus is a high-pressure node dumping the moisture down onto the continent with a secondary system as a low-pressure node still churning in the east. The high pressure out to sea is an odd but effective delivery mechanism for the water. Down under, we've got a moisture flow directly north into western Australia. This meets the convergence that we've been monitoring for a few days now, still ripping across the southern portion of the nation. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open, no fear, at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.